Hey guys and welcome back to Hoosier Hardware and welcome back from Thanksgiving break here on the channel and while we do have some Ryzen 3950X coverage coming in the very near future we are first focused on the Ryzen 2600 as a great holiday option for those of you that are starting to think about building out a gaming PC whether it's for a gift to somebody else or whether it's just for a gift to yourself. The Ryzen 2600 here is actually one of the best CPUs on the market for putting together a budget-friendly system, a system that's going to cost you less than $500, get you up and running on 1080p gaming at 60 plus FPS and pretty much every modern title depending on what types of settings you're willing to uh, uh, work with and that sort of thing. But the big thing with this system that we're going to be parting out today and looking at is that it is extremely upgradable, whether it's upgrading the 2600 that we're going to be featuring here to a Ryzen 3600 or even up to a 3950X if you really wanted to uh, push the limits of what the system can handle or whether it's just a GPU upgrade in general, storage upgrades, everything is upgradable and very much so with this system. There is really nothing in this system that can't be upgraded, which is why it's such a great jumping off point for 1080p gaming because it gives you those options moving forward, which I always try to include when you're parting out a new system, especially if you're paying brand new system money for the system, you should actually be able to then carry it forward for several generations of hardware in a perfect world, of course. So we're gonna get right into that, but um, I guess I should run that intro first. So let's go ahead and take a quick overview of the parts list. Then I am gonna focus on a couple of these individual components that I like to point out. Now, I will say right now with holiday pricing, this thing is a really solid value right now. It is likely that after the holidays are over, if you're stumbling across this video, some of these components probably won't be as cheap, but you can probably still find the components or similar components for similar costs. You just might have to search around for a little bit more. But obviously, we are starting with the Ryzen 5. 2600 here at $115 right now. And by the way, I believe all these components are Newegg pricing right now. It just happens to be the cheapest way to build this system. So I will leave links down below to the Newegg, but I'll also probably leave Amazon links down there as well in case you want to shop around a little bit between the two sides, especially for future price fluctuations. But the Ryzen 5 2600 gives us six cores, 12 threads. It's going to be able to handle every game out there right now and realistically speaking every game out there in the future probably several years so it's not going to be a required upgrade in the next several years however if you do want to boost your cpu performance then upgrading this will be a very easy upgrade a drop in ryzen 3600 for example will give you a decent boost especially in gaming performance it seems like the ryzen 3000 chips do handle gaming better than the 2000 generation did but it is just a drop in upgrade one of the great things about this system the asrock b450m is our motherboard of choice and the reason that i like this motherboard as an option really comes down to it having decent vrm cooling decent upgradability and also for dim slots on the motherboard it really is a great option in that regard because it does give us that upgradability on our ram side of things especially and you'll see why that's a big deal here in a minute but it gives us the ability to upgrade from 8 gigs to 16 gigabytes without having to buy completely brand new memory. We can actually just drop in the upgrade. Now for memory, we did sort of trim a little bit of fat with this build, and this is purely a cost-cutting maneuver for this particular system, going with 8 gigabytes of 3200 megahertz rated memory. Now the nice thing about this motherboard and RAM combination is if you want that 16 gigabytes, you can just add in that second kit of this memory if you're going with this exact kit, that is, or you can start off with a 16 gigabyte kit and give yourself the upgrade path to 32 gigabytes in the future. But with four DIMM slots and only filling two of those off the bat, we do give ourselves that upgrade path, that very easy upgrade path rather, to 16 gigabytes in the future. Now storage actually worked out really well this time around because we found a SATA M.2 drive. So you're not getting NVMe speeds here or anything, you're just getting SATA 3 speeds, but it's a 512 gigabyte SSD and it's only $42 right now on Newegg. So pricing is really, really good even for just a regular SATA drive that is just a 2.5 inch drive. But being an M.2, drive this actually saves us a lot of cable management as well so it leaves those bays empty for future upgrades and gets you started off with some really nice 
fast storage for uh, several games at 512 gigabytes and it gives you a very easy upgrade path again with your storage solution. Now in the deal of the day, at least in my mind, we have an RX 570. This is just a four gigabyte card, but it's just $100 after its $20 rebate right now on Newegg. So this is a fantastic way to get into 1080p gaming. Uh, you really can't beat the price to performance on the new market than $100 for an RX 570 right now. In fact, you don't really see them that much cheaper even on the used markets like on eBay, for instance, than $100 to begin with. So this is a great new value for a graphics card. And it's one, if you're looking to get into PC gaming, this is a great way to do it. Now for our PC case, we went with the Deepcool Matrix 30 and at $35, it might be a little bit more expensive or rather $36 shipped. It might be a little bit more expensive than I like to go with a case in a super budget system, but it packs a lot of nice features that you don't typically see for this price point. For one, it does have that tempered side glass panel, which is going to do a really nice job of showing off the components, though functionally that's not really a big deal. What I like about it though, is we have a mesh front panel here and we do have a rear fan included. So it's actually going to have decent airflow, which you don't always see with these cheaper cases. A lot of times you see just solid plastic front panels there. So this is going to actually give us some decent airflow. But then on the inside of things, we have really solid drive expansion options. We have a couple of two and a half inch drive uh, bays there that are sort of mounted off to the right side and, uh, and really just kind of out of the way in general. And then we actually have some nice expansion for three and a half inch drives. Maybe you're wanting to add some high capacity hard drives in your system. You actually do have that expansion available to you. And then if you really want, you can even throw in a five and a quarter inch drive, like a CD drive, DVD drive, Blu-ray drive, maybe you watch movies and that sort of thing on your PC regularly and you actually want one of those drives, you actually can throw one of those in there as well. And expanding to the graphics card side of things, we actually have a lot of room in this chassis for graphics cards to be fairly bulky and fairly large. So this system, rather this case, is gonna give us a lot of expansion options down the road, which is really what we're looking for with this system and the reason that I go with this case pretty much any time I'm building a super budget system like this because at $35, it still sticks to that budget side of things but gives you a lot of room for expansion. Now for the power supply, we do have an EVGA 450 watt, 80 plus bronze certified unit. And this is gonna be good for really pretty much any upgrade now and in the future. Now, if you're going for some really high end parts, you may want a better power supply down the road but for just $35 right now, this is a great way to get you off and running. And realistically, especially with how power efficient modern CPUs and modern GPUs are, 450 watts is probably gonna be plenty for uh, the foreseeable future. And as parts get even more power efficient, that 450 watts is just gonna go further and further in your build. Though, obviously, it is possible you'll need to upgrade it down the road if you go for those crazy or high-end parts. But as far as a budget PC and getting the thing together with still maintaining some good upgradability, this is a good option. It's one of the better uh, and cheaper, really, power supplies out there right now that'll get the job done. So if you're willing to jump through the hoops right now of mailing in those rebates and getting the rebate cards back and all that, you're looking at 430-ish dollars right now from Newegg if you're buying all these components. And it's a really fantastic way to get into 1080p gaming. It gives you a ton of upgrade options. And while I do like the Ryzen 3600 as a great starter CPU for your system, the fact is right now it's significantly more expensive than the Ryzen 2600, which if you're just trying to do 1080p gaming, you're gonna get yourself to 60 FPS no problem with a 2600. It's a great way to get into gaming. And the great thing about the AM4 platform is just how much room for upgrades you give yourself because you can jump to a Ryzen 3600, a 3700X, 3800X, 3900X, or even if you're a little bit crazy with this motherboard, a 3950X, though I'm not sure how the VRMs would handle that, but you could do it. And with this system, you have all the room in the world for upgrades. It's a great way to get yourself started on 1080p gaming. I will, like I said, leave links down below on Newegg and probably also on Amazon if I can find the parts there to a lot of the parts in this system. Keep in mind, prices will fluctuate after the fact. So uh, especially if you're coming back after the holiday season, maybe prices aren't quite so cheap. But right now, if you're seeing this on launch day for the video, 
great way to get into gaming on the PC side of things. But I do want to hear from you guys. Let me know in those comments down below what you think of this build. What would you change about this build to maybe better suit it for what you're trying to do? How would you possibly put in upgrades to this build? Maybe you're looking for better gaming performance. So you go for a $500 build. Maybe we're seeing an RX 580 in there instead of a 570. All those thoughts on the build in general, let me know down below. And of course, if you like the video and you wanna see more like it, give this video a like, share, subscribe, and comment. You can follow me both on Instagram and on Twitter at Hoosier Hardware. And as always, I'll let YouTube queue up a couple more videos from my channel for you to watch. I'm Shane with Hoosier Hardware, and I'll see you guys in the next video.